What's going on? Welcome to a Monday afternoon of live racing. In case people were confused, that was me in the video, not this man right here. But tracking out to Chris Griffin here at Parks Racing, Craig Donnelly, the Hall of Fame handicapper. We're back. Two weeks off. What'd you do? I uh, rotted a lot, got older. Okay. But I had a good time. I'm glad to be off. But I have to say, the way we're coming back with a bang makes yeah. it even more exciting. This really helps. 13 races back to back here on Monday, 13 races tomorrow. We're going to talk about all the stakes racing action here this afternoon. We're going to focus on those races mainly. But first, we got to look back at some of the winners. It was a couple weeks ago, so we got to remember some of those selections. Did you have nine winners or something like that? Nine for 12 on, on last Wednesday. Wow. Because I'm a spoiled brat, my reaction to it was like I beat a nose. It would have been the first time I ever had 10. But I got beat a nose on one race. So a rotting, I'm still old, looking for spoiled ten. brat. Exactly. Right Outside of that, I'm perfect. And a Hall of Famer. Let's take a look at the Parks Playback. Parks Playback time. Here we go. Let's take it all the way back to before the break. That's right. On August 1st, that was a Monday. Catch Vibe Vibe. Rolling through the stretch here, getting the job done for trainer Martin Thompson. Little Miss Hot Shot, how good was she that afternoon? Trainer Miguel Penaloza fending off all other rivals and getting the job done on the front end. Sweet Wilhelmina, she does love it here at Parks. She continues her winning ways. Rolling down the stretch up on the grandstand side and Frankie Pennington aboard for trainer Scott Lake. Sweet Wilhelmina continues to love Parks. Tuesday action was August 2nd. Princess Sophie made it interesting at the end of this race, just ducking in, getting close to the wire, but trainer John Service, Frankie Pennington, they team up for another score. Rose Legacy, she did a nice job here, holding off other rivals, gutting it out through the stretch lane. Andrew Wolf's on for trainer Carlos Guerrero. Rose Legacy with the victory. Morning Matcha, she continues to improve. Loves it here at Parks. She's undefeated here at Parks. Paco Lopez aboard for the first time. And now, where will Butch Reed point this star filly? On Wednesday action, August 3rd, go for the kill. Passing all rivals through the stretch, trainer Freddy Velasquez ending up the week strong. Jonathan Ocasio aboard for the ride. Scottamouche taking it two turns, testing around this two-turn distance, but Paco Lopez widening here in the stretch, and trainer Guadalupe Preciado now has plenty of options for Scottamouche. And the goddess of snakes, she had a tough race on her hands, but leading rider Ruben Silvera for leading trainer Jamie Ness, holding off the competition and striding out late to get the victory. With the time off, you're going to see some of those horses come right back here in the seven stakes races we've got on tap. we got the great stakes racing action off the turf, so move to the main track. That's going to help some of these runners moving to the main track. Obviously, we got the two-year-old stakes races as well. So let's jump right in, Craig, and talk about some of the races here on the card. And race number five, actually, before we get into the stakes, throwing this curveball. But race number five, there was a horse you wanted to touch on real quick. I like how you mentioned curveball. Yeah. Because... The 10 horse game seven owned by Alex Bregman of the Houston Astros. Whoa. And as you, you would film me, and, and as you mentioned, named game seven. I mean, come on. Perfect. But number six, Tiz Speedy really impressed me his first start. He ran against the terrific Florida Samba, favored in the state today. He got in serious trouble early, circled the field to finish second. I was really impressed by that move he made. When you so I'm going to lean towards Tiz Speedy. And when you take a look at common races, if Tiz Speedy runs very well and wins that race, that's only going to make Florida Sombra a little bit shorter price in the stakes race a little bit later on this mm -hmm. afternoon. We'll take a look at the first stakes race, race number six. And when we take a look at uh, this stakes race, it's taken off the turf. How much is that going to change your handicapping? You know, often when they take a race off the grass, you get a ton of scratches, and you're like, oh, all these grass horses are stuck on the dirt. But in this case, several of these horses seem just as equally adept running on the dirt as the grass. And John Service has two live ones in here. Number one, Love in the Air, and three, Midnight Obsession. Both handle the main track fine. They also can run on turf. So I think that gives them the edge. My Dixie Last can also uh, run on the, on the dirt, and, and we have one that was entered for main track only. Yeah, it looks like an interesting race. We'll see what happens with scratches and changes. Obviously, we'll get those full scratches and changes to you. Uh, when you take a look at the next race, and we talk about the talk to Teresa Garofalo, and we take a look at some of the horses in here, Precious is going to be a horse that's actually going to move up for me. I think that this horse is really going to relish moving to the or running on this main track and getting in this race over a bit of moisture in it. So let's take a look at what John Service had to say about Precious. Uh, we're probably going to be running the sprint. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll have to run against Chub Wagon, but I entered her yesterday in an open allowance, hopefully to get a prep in her before that, and the race didn't go. So we'll train her up to it and, and uh, 
point for the Garofola. Last year, she had a really good year. This year, you know, she's been a little harder on herself, you know, and we have some issues that we had to address, um, but she's training good now. You know, we kind of pointed for these races coming up. There's a couple other PA races late through the year that we'll look at, but with her, it's just one race at a time. Precious, not sure if she's on your ticket, but Chub Wagon might be on your ticket. Chub Wagon, hey, Mama Luke, they've squared <laughs> off. They're going to see each other once again. Let's take a look. You're going to go 941 in here. You land on Chub Wagon. Some really nice horses in this race. This is a competitive field, the Pennsylvania Bread Horse of the Year. And we'll take a look at this effort. And this was right back here at Parks. She came here off the layoff. And I think you and I actually talked about this race. What did you think of that performance? It was her comeback effort. Now she gets the extra furlough. All right, that's the thing. First race off a layoff, wet track. And Hey Mom Luke did what she always does. She drifts out through the stretch, held on very gamely, but Chub Wagon, 12 for 13, got there in time. And what I mentioned to you earlier, the big thing here at Chub Wagon, this is the only race she ever lost was the Garofalo last year, and now she's got a shot to get her revenge. You're going to avenge that loss. But you said, this is a really talented field of PA birds. Cinna Bunny's terrific. Oxana's won twice over this track by a total of 28 and a quarter lengths. And Remain Anonymous has gotten real good all of a sudden and just romped at Saratoga. I did have a handicapper text me about Remain Anonymous. They liked that horse, so they liked that Philly or that five-year-old mare quite a bit there, number six. Looks like a wide open race. If you want to play against Chub Wagon, we'll see what happens there in the Garofalo. A very competitive field. Let's talk about what's happening on YouTube. Hit that subscribe. Marshall Jenny Handicap, you're going to move to the main track. We talked about this, five furlongs on the main track. The critical way is not going to go. Probably see him tomorrow on the park's dash if we're on the turf. But where did you end up in here? Is it as simple as Admiral Abe? We're going to talk about Smooth B as well. So let's take a look at those two contenders first, hear from their connections, and then we'll talk about your selections. The thing with him is, is he's just such an old sport that he can do either one. Um, he's His last race in Saratoga really blew me away because it rains. They didn't take it off the turf. It was soft, and he still got third with, I mean, he was just incredible that day. He is exactly where he needs to be. He definitely kind of needed a little break and a breather, um, but being, you know, the old man in the barn, he has certainly earned his keep, and I really hope whatever race he does go in, I really hope that he just does what he does. He goes out there. He, re he reminds me of Baron a little bit just because he goes out, and he's just that like, kind of let's train, I know my job type deal, and he's uh, extremely professional. I nominated him for two. I nominated him for the uh, banjo picker, which is three quarters, and the Marshall Jenny, which is five eighths on the grass, which he won last year off the grass. The problem with him is no conditions. I can't get him in anywhere. So actually, just before we spoke, I entered him in the Wolf Hill at Monmouth. So hopefully this Saturday he'll be running there. That'll be his prep. Depends on the distance with him, you know. Uh, he ran real well on the Turf Monster last year, but no Lasix is a problem for him. Tremendous. He really is. I mean, he's just been coming like today, coming off the track like Adrian's like, he's out of his mind. Obviously shooting those videos before we went on the break and he ran pretty well in the Wolf Hill actually, Admiral Abe, who I'm talking about in there. But with the race moving off the turf, now moving to the main track, you take a look at your selections, you end up with the three smooth B. Are you going to stay there? I mean, that was your top pick on turf. Are you going to stay there under? What's amazing is the, my first two selections have never won on the grass. I was on the grass. <laughs> so, it, which I can explain. So it's your it's fault it started raining. I so. thought it was really misleading. These, both of these horses, smooth B and Admiral Abe, can run on either surface. They're, it's misleading that they're windless on grass. They've had some close, frustrating losses. But I'll tell you, they're both very fast, and I think it's between these two. And the thing is, whoever gets the jump on the other one might be the winner. But both of them are fast and determined. Admiral Abe's one of the best claims ever made at this track. He has just done nothing but win for Bobby Moscow the last couple of years. Just a terrific claim a couple of years ago, and you got to respect him. But Smooth B often runs better than his odds suggest he would. So I think it's between those two. Yeah, I thought Smooth B, he's really come back into form a little bit, too. He would kind of tail off in form a little bit, but he's come back. He hasn't had the win. So, I mean, how short of a price are you willing to take on a horse that we haven't seen in the winner's circle for some time against a horse like Admiral Abe? If 
who do you think goes off favorite? I, I'm guessing Admiral Abe's okay. going to go off favorite because he does win more often. Sure. And the fact the distance appears to suit him and all. But I really think that is a real tough two-horse field. And another thing is a lot of times speed horses are a good thing. Well, they show speed, but they tire. These horses will fight you to the end. So this should be a very good race. We're going to talk about some two-year-old stakes races coming up. But first, got to see what's going on with the Philly Big Five. Package there from the TV crew doing a great job as always. Over a quarter million dollars now into that carryover jackpot, the Philly Big Five. It's a jackpot bet. Plenty of opportunities here with those 13 races. Starts in race number nine, and we're going to take a look at this stakes race. We're going to take a look at two contenders in here, Florida Sombra and Uptown Amanda. Both stay in. Quite a few scratches in that race, but we'll hear from Craig here after we take a look at this quick preview. She do very good. Everything she do it to the perfect. She brings this money. She breathes very, very nice. Can make 46 and one. So far, looking good. We entered in uh, Phyllis race, and that race not go. And uh, we ended up put against two boys. That's Florida Sombra, and she ends up being your top pick. Obviously, she's going to be a short price. We're going to take a look at Uptown Amanda in just a second, but let's take a look at your selections if we can real quick, Craig, and we'll take a look at who your picks are. But Florida Sombra, she did everything right on her debut. She's going to be a short price. And the other thing is she did that's rare is she was in against a full field of Colts. I know. The girl clobbered the boys, yeah. went right to the lead, drew away, dominated, and I'm sure owner Joe Mbizzi was thrilled. He stands the stallion, social inclusion, so she just crushed the field of Colts. She's back for the first time against her own gender today, and she does have one tough. Uptown Amanda was another very impressive winner in her debut, uh, Uptown Charlie Brown Philly, and it looks like these two, but Florida Sombra is very difficult to get past. I thought her number was going to be a little bit higher uptown, Amanda. She did it very easily on her debut. Florida Samba ran a bigger number. We'll see how that ends up playing out. But we did catch up with Scott Lake. Let's take a look at what he had to say about uptown, Amanda. Uh, the Miss Blue Tie-Dye. She's been push button horse since she's gotten in here. I mean, just the easiest two year old I've ever had to get ready. I mean, that's definitely a spot we're focusing on. I mean, that, we're pointing to that, and uh, I mean, got high expectations with the way she ran first time. Yeah. Just never had a uh, two year old filly with as much class and ease as she's done it so far. So, I mean, that's a big statement there from trainer Scott Lake. He's talking about her professionalism, and she's a nice filly that continues to improve. How much do you think she needs to improve in order to be able to run with Florida Sombra in that race? You know, it, as you said, speed figures say Florida Sombra is the big edge. I'm a big one on visual impression. Sure. And both of them impressed me visually. I agree. But I have to say, the fact that Florida Sombra just took control immediately and beat a solid field of Colts, I think she beat a better field than Uptown Amanda defeated. But the point is, fast horse, one easily and early start, how can you knock her? You can't find any yeah. fault with her. Yeah, Marion Grace, kind of an interesting first-time starter in there, too. She's got a ton of fast works in there. Ed Coletti Jr., it seems like maybe, you know, with a bit of racing as she improves, but she could be a pace factor, at least, in that spot. Let's take a look at the other two-year-old race now for the boys. And obviously, when you take a look at this race, a little bit wi more, more wide open, actually, on paper. 90% uh, Maddie probably ends up going off favored. I thought Keith sends hello. I think he wants a little bit longer, but he catches this five and a half for a long distance, so getting a little bit more ground to work with. But let's take a look at those two contenders before we talk about the two-year-old race for the boys, the Whistle Pig. He's 90% Bryn's brother, yep. and he was originally 90% Ryan. Um, the owners were pregnant, and they thought that they were going to have a boy, and then they wound up having a girl named her Maddie, so he is now 90% Maddie, but <laughs> he knew he could do it. I wanted it to be longer, being four and a half. Um, I was really kind of eerie about it because I knew he wants to go long, he wants to really stretch his legs, but when he won, I was by a nose, by, you know, a little nose, he, uh, I cried. He's doing really well. He, um, he goes out there, he'll 
be as happy as anything and he uh, he's really starting to form into something special. He's the class clown of the barn for sure. He, uh, he'll he make it known that he's here and he will holler down the shed row if he sees somebody that might have a cookie or is potential to getting some love. When he comes back to the barn from the track, he will hunt me down and stop in the middle of the shed row just yeah, to know, get a cookie. He, he tries hard. He's um, He has run a little bit more than I like to run a two-year-old. Um, but you know, those quarter mile races were like workouts. They weren't really, you know, they weren't really hard races. So I don't, I don't think he's knocked out from the racing he's done. And we have enough time now from yesterday until the stake to really set him relax and get him set up for the stake. Is he just I think he's, um, I think his ideal distance will be seven furlongs, like he said, six and a half. Um, you know, these short races are a little bit tough on the Charlies because they don't really have that quick half mile speed. Um, and that's why they're always the bridesmaid and never the bride. But mentally, he'll be ready to go. And, um, you know, you run against MPA Brett Sires, it's a little bit a little bit easier. Um, that filly yesterday was just a freak. I mean, she just run out the run out the screen on us. So, yeah, he's he's fit enough. He definitely doesn't need any like um, overexerting workouts or anything. Just maintain the training, maintain the breezes, and um, you know he'll he'll be fine. He looks like he bounced back good from yesterday's race, and should be ready to go. To be fair, I mean. Anytime Craig and I hear cookie, we go running down the hall as well. Same thing, just like 90% Maddie. But will he be getting all the cookies here this afternoon? I mean, he's a nice two-year-old. That was a nice debut. And let's face it, Butch Reed has so many good juvenile two-year-olds. And he won with the, the uh, sorority over yeah, the Videro. weekend with Videro. Yeah. He has a barn full of bears. And this could be another one. The interesting thing is these horses are coming from everywhere. we got the local angle. A western yard just ran well at Saratoga for George Weaver. And Deacon Dougie romped in his debut in Ohio. So they're coming from everywhere for this race. It makes for a nice mix that these horses are having competed against each other for, for the most part and we'll get a better idea. Really shows the strength of the Pennsylvania bred program too, because you got PA bred, PA sired, so now you talk about those horses from different regions, but now they want to come here to parks because you get those stakes races with that opportunity, the 100,000 and of course the 200,000 when we take a look at the races on September 24th. So good fields here for the two-year-olds. We'll see if we've got some emerging stars in the field, 90% Maddie. I agree with you, but I actually played against. I went with the four Western Yarn. Mm -hmm. I think with Trevor McCarthy there off that debut effort, I think improves and has a big shot in that race. Let's take a look at, have you ever been on the Belt Parkway? Belt Parkway had a big performance last week and Uriah St. Louis, he continues to win. That's our performance of the week. You talked about the most competitive race on the card. You thought the banjo picker. I mean, how good is that race when we talk about uh, Baron and For the Love of Bourbon? We're going to take a look at a replay right now. We take a look at, at the seven being the top choice. Is that your top choice, Baron? Yes, there on he top? Is. But we'll talk about this in just a moment. What did you think of this effort? This was back here uh, in April. What did you think of this performance from both of them? Uh, they are two terrific sprinters. And you say, oh, they're Pennsylvania Brits. They can win anywhere. And they've proven it. They win an open company. This was a real battle, and for, for love of bourbon, load of ability, Barron has just gotten better and better. He's not only fast, he is so game. He was very game at Penn National, very game here, getting nipped by for love of bourbon. Then he came back and Pay, what do you pay? Big, nice, big price next time. He's been a romping. I mean, you take a look at. He's a bear. He hasn't been. He hasn't. You said barn full of bears. I'm going to use that one. That's a good line. But I, I, I t the thing about Barrett, he hasn't been favored in like his last four starts, and he's never finished less than worse than second. So we'll see if we catch another price. Moving on real quick, though. Race number twelve, the Stormcat. Another wide open race. Who did you like in there? Uh, divine miracle since moving to Jamie Ness's barn has won seven of nine races. A little hard not to like that. And he <laughs> doesn't just win them, he wins them easy, often wins them easy. His last one was just under wraps. Uh, but you know what, you have to respect a couple more horses. It's very interesting. Ruby Blue's one of the most amazing horses that's ever run here. Old, an old man, he's made what, about 800,000 in his career. He's won like, I believe, 16 races here. Uh, and then you have two boss, 
uh, high profile barn, came in here, one for fun with Carmouche last time. He's obviously hidden the, his peak form. And another interesting horse in the race is Farmo Power, an Uncle Eno. He hasn't beaten horses this good yet, but he's trounced them. And he, last time out, he kind of blocked on the turn, had it shifted him out to find running room, and he just took off. So we'll kinda, he's got a nut, tricky post. And he's trying to route again, but he's a horse that's an up-and-comer. We're going to talk about some of the racing action on Tuesday. Uh, Gunfire Gal, slam dunk though, to end the card. Let's just say she'll be a heavy favorite, but I do <laughs> want to say there's one horse that I think might make her run, and that's Golden Tabby. Last bad. race wasn't a true measure. Yep. If you go throw that race out, she is the best of the rest and might make Gunfire Gal work. Let's take a look at Tuesday's races. We got three stakes races. Hopefully we get on the turf tomorrow, the park stash, start talking about that. But if the critical way comes back tomorrow, I mean, he'll be probably favored in there again, but that's a pretty tough field in the park stash that's that's scheduled to move forward. What worries me about the critical way is last time out he was six to five, no excuse, got beat. Maybe he's not quite as sharp as he was. What is he, eight years old now? And the other thing is, the competition's good. The inside two horses, uh, Just Wave and Smile, has won, Just Wave and Smile's won six, consecutive turf sprints. That's amazing. Yeah. And Scuttlebuzz, even though he drops back early and as I said, he might want to run a little farther, he's going to be flying down the stretch. So if the critical way is even money, four to five, whatever, to me he's a bet against. And I think a horse that's won six consecutive turf sprints, just wave and smile, works out a good inside trip. I'll go with him. The Catherine Sophia, that's going to be a nice lineup as well. You see some really nice fillies in there. Interstate Daydream, she's the morning line favorite in that spot. Morning Matcha, let's take a look at her stretch run, and this is going to be off of her last effort. You saw that in the performance of the week. Bazinga C is going to come back as well. This is a big step up. This is a competitive field. What did you think uh, as far as the Catherine Sophia was concerned? Well, the great part for Morning Matcha is, one, is that she loves this track. She just wins here every time. The other thing is what this race did, she didn't beat as good a field, but it's a confidence booster. She gets to crush a field over over the track that helps and there's enough speed in this race to set up her late kick the question is is she good enough to beat this competition yeah Paco Lopez was aboard that afternoon you went with the two interstate interstate daydream green up's going to be tough in there as well we'll see what happens to Catherine Sophia we're running short on time so talking about the Smarty <laughs> Jones great three three hundred thousand dollar stakes race this is a lineup of, of horses in here it's a nice field there are so many question marks though I mean you can go so many different directions yeah. where did you land in this race when you take a look at this one we're going to take a look at last year's race but go ahead and talk about your selection as we take a look at Folsom and last year's Smarty Jones stakes. All right, well, I'm going to be considered insane with my selection in the Smarty Jones tomorrow. I'm going to take number seven, Witty, because I love him. Okay. And I don't know if he can beat these horses, but, but I saw his last race. He stayed in the gate a month, dwelled at the start. I thought, that dude, and I bet on him. Yeah. He has no shot. Threw the money in the air, the ticket thing, or whatever. He goes flying around the field and gets up for second. He should have won the race by daylight. He's, he's another horse, doesn't get the respect he deserves. His odds seem higher than they should be. I think he's 12 to 1 on the program. If he's 7, 8, 10 to 1, I'm, I think he's worth a shot. He needs to break. He didn't break last time. Pioneer of Medina, throw out the Derby race. That means nothing. It was a big 20 horse field. He just tossed that race. Right, he's sure. gotten time off. Big, a bunch of big races before that. And then you got a guy, some guy named Chad Brown's running a horse named Golden Alchemist in here that looks like he's developing and getting well. And, you know, that's another thing we've got here. We've got Brad Cox here, yeah. Todd Pletcher. Yeah. You know, Chad Brown, they're all here, here tomorrow. Uh, just tremendous racing the next two days. It really is. And you know that we've got that $50,000 bonus for owner and trainer if they win the Smarty Jones and go on to win the Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby. So it's going to be a great prep day tomorrow. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media accounts as well. You can find his selections at patha.org for the PTHA, but Twitter at Parks Racing, at In the Grandstand, YouTube, hit that subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, of course, Parks underscore Racing. Woo! 26 races the next two days. We've done it. Craig Donnelly, you are a gem. Hall of Famer, you're still young, my man. You're still a young man. Not quite like Ruby Blue, but you are you are approaching. <laughs> He's faster than me still. We'll see you guys here next Monday. Great racing coming up. Glad to be back here at Parks Racing.